In 2017, Lecrae drops his popular single, Blessings, featuring Ty Dolla Sign. And this was a big record. It got a lot of people talking. People had a lot to say about this joint uh, for various reasons. But believe it or not, it is 2022, the end of the year. We're about to go into 2023. And people are still talking about this record. One artist in particular is up-and-coming rapper Caleb Gordon. Uh, who recently posted a tweet commenting on this song. And we're going to break it down. We're going to chop it up and talk about the ripple effect that happened after he made that comment. But before we get into all that, run that intro. Caleb Gordon uh, last week posted a tweet along the lines of uh, a comment about the Blessings music video saying, this song is not a Christian hip hop song, prove me wrong, uh, or something to that effect. And uh, it got a lot of people talking. Um, I'm sitting on IG one night, I'm, I'm running through and I see a post about a live that TJ Carroll did. TJ Carroll went live, I believe, just for fun to freestyle and kind of you know do things for him and his audience personally um and then shortly after what wound up happening is is he got Caleb Gordon on the call and they started to talk about this tweet um which led into other artists coming into the chat as well uh I believe Ruslan, Kieran in the Light, um Mike Teasy and it began this massive conversation about what is Christian hip hop? What should it do for us? What what does the mission field look like for Christians doing art? What what is allowable? What is fruitful when it comes to collaboration? And it led to a lot of discussions. Now, I just want to preface this uh, by saying, especially since it's you know my first time coming back into the YouTube space to drop content, I want to say that conversations like these a lot of times will be incomplete. Um, it's not like an overall synopsis or like a blueprint of everything you need to know about how to be a Christian and how to navigate this conversation. We're just venting right now. We're ventilating. You know, we're, we're circulating the air in the room. We're seeing what people have to say. Um, and particularly, I want to react to some of the comments that I heard in TJ Carroll's live. Um, there was feedback given by uh, it initially starts off with TJ Carroll and Caleb, and then there's other people that come into play. Mike Teasy, then Ruslan, then Kieran, things like that. And I want to comment on, I'm not going to comment on everything, um, but this is going to be a pretty long video, so we're going to have to chop it up. I want to comment on everything that I felt that that I would have given additional insight to or additional perspective to, so we can kind of get a little more well-roundedness to the conversation. Now, I'm not the end-all be-all to these conversations, so in some sense, this is just my opinion. But I think that there's a lot of biblical backing behind some of the things that I'm about to say. And again, I'm not going to quote everything they said, but I do want to just dive into a lot of the things that were said and go into them a little bit further and react to some of the comments that were particularly made. Overall, I think this conversation was super dope, super, super fruitful, and super loving. Everybody was patient. Nobody really had the boxing gloves out on this conversation, which is exactly what we should do. We live in a society today, even as Christians, where everybody is so sensitive to any kind of critique, any kind of commentary, that we all just kind of either tell everybody they're dope or we just never really share our opinion. We don't get into like critical thinking when it comes to how to make art. We only do that in our closest circles. We have these little barbershop conversations and you will never hear those conversations, especially as a fan. And I think that we miss out when we don't share these conversations. So in one sense, I'm super happy that Caleb made that comment publicly because he even admitted like there was no malicious intent behind it, um, that he was just venting. He wanted to get a conversation started about, you know, this song sounds this way. Is it really a Christian rap song? It might not be bad, but is it beneficial? Is it fruitful? Is it... Christian hip hop, um, he wanted to get a conversation started. And I think that so often we see those kind of uh, conversations that have tension in them 
um, get either shied away or people are like, oh, let's not do this. You're causing division and stuff like that. And I think that it's because a lot of the people that do engage in those conversations actually do divide. They don't have communication skills. They don't have patience. They don't have self-control. And so it just becomes a boxing match where people start taking sides and we don't really get perspective that changes our lives. There's nothing that's worse than being in a conversation, breaking down things and chopping up how to do life better. And then you walk out of the room and then you don't actually do life better. You don't take anything that you learn and actually apply it in your life. That is a huge temptation in everybody's life, Christian or not. You will be learning something that's so refreshing and so new and you're like, man, I really, you feel convicted. I really need to apply this in my life. And you start talking a lot about this and making arrangements and plans and all this stuff. And then you go home and you don't do anything about it because you were just kind of tickling your intellectual ear and you really didn't want to have change at the heart level. So that's what we don't want to do. So, you know, part of me is hesitant to make a video this long because I know the temptation is just going to be to soak all of this up and be like, oh, that was good or that was bad or whatever. And then you don't actually go change. So best believe I'm going to be snapping little second clip videos of um, sections of this talk to go, you know, highlight things on Instagram and whatnot to kind of get you guys wrapped around some of the smaller concepts. But literally this video is just made to walk through each of the comments that I felt I would like to respond to to provide additional insight or additional pushback uh, to some of the things that were said. And we're going to go through from everybody that was involved in that conversation. So let's go ahead and get that started. I wanted to write down exactly what these individuals said so that I'm not misspeaking on their points or exactly what I'm quoting them to be saying. I think that's really important that we don't take things out of context. And also it's important that we don't respond to things that weren't even spoke about. Like just because someone makes a comment about something doesn't mean, it's almost like if I said, what color is the sky? And I'm talking about, oh, the sky is blue because of da 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 da. And somebody just comes in to react to that to say, well, the sky is also white. Like it doesn't, it's not necessarily relevant. It's like both points are true and you're just trying to like add some extra emphasis on something for the sake of being either prideful or cool or act like you're providing additional feedback when the conversation was just about the blueness of how the sky was or so, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, um, the thing that I don't want to do is provide additional insight that doesn't address what they were specifically talking about. Now, remember, this is TJ Carroll on his IG Live talking to Caleb Gordon about why what he meant by saying the tweet that the song Blessings by Lecrae is not a Christian hip-hop song. He is digging deeper and saying, yo, well, what do you mean by that? And they're having a discussion back and forth about not only the sentiment of where Caleb was coming from, but also TJ's perspective. And then it kind of snowballs into a bunch of different Christian conversation about the arts and the mission field and things like that. So I'm just going to go through them in order. They were jumping around in a lot of areas. And that's why I'm making this video because some stuff needs to be sat with and I want to provide my insight because I think I can give some helpful information there. I do want to say before I get into this that unfortunately I think these conversations can be difficult to have because we don't really have a definition for what Christian hip hop is. Everybody has their own definition of what Christian hip hop is and to be quite frank, frankly, I, uh, to be quite frank, I talk to a lot of Christians today that don't even care what the definition is. They just do what they do and they don't need to feel like there needs to be some foundational thing that we all agree to. Everybody should just make what they want to make. But that becomes ambiguous and difficult if you're a guy who's saying, I want my music to reach the lost. I want my music to communicate the gospel. I want my music to edify the church. When you start to have specific intent and goals and also, you're shopping and you're trying to find music all of a same essence and subject matter and vibe. You need to be able to find certain things and that's where it starts to get confusing is when we decide we just want to leave that ambiguous and up to the artist. Genres exist for a reason. Subgenre, sub exist for a reason and there's nothing wrong with them. They don't devalue a different kind of music. So 
I think that's why this conversation gets had is because until we actually have a solid definition of what Christian hip hop is and isn't, we can't say somebody isn't Christian hip hop. Now again, a lot of people have a definition for it, but the question is, is there a collective conscious of people that agree on that on one particular definition or are there a lot of pockets of people that have different definitions of them? Um, unfortunately, CHH is so young, we don't have a lot of gatekeepers that really get to have a say in this or they don't even care by now or they have a group of people that they kind of agree you know, intellectually on these things and they don't really care about imparting that on the youth. So, uh, or the youth's just not caring to even hear it because they're the new thing that's out now and they don't need to hear an old guy tell them what Christian hip hop is or isn't. There's a lot going on there, but that's why there becomes tension in these conversations because of the ambiguity with the definition itself. What does Christian hip hop sound like? What does it emphasize? And what is its goal? We should strive, in my opinion, to answer those three questions just from a searchability standpoint. If I'm in a store or online and I want to find gospel Christian hip hop music, I should be able to find it all in one place and know what to expect when I go into that category. I think a lot of people don't belong in the Christian hip hop category, but they don't make bad music either. It's not sinful or anything like that. It just doesn't represent what I believe to be the values and descriptors of what Christian hip hop is. Um, but again, I can't really impose that because there's no collective agreement on what the definition is. So that's why we have these issues. We got to start making definitions. That aside, let's get into the conversation. It kicks off with TJ and Caleb. So TJ says right off the bat, he wants to give Lecrae the benefit of the doubt, meaning um, that Lecrae's reasoning for collaborating with um, Ty Dolla Sign, um, he wants to believe that it was gospel oriented. There was intentionality to fellowship with that brother and maybe have him come to Christ or whatever positive from a spiritual standpoint that could have came from that, not only the relationship behind the scenes, but from the music as well. TJ Carroll opens up by saying, well, I'm just going to give him the benefit of the doubt that it was well-intentioned. And I don't think that that's necessarily bad. Like, yeah, on one side, assuming that just because you see a music video called Blessings might be bad. But as far as like you have a brother in Christ, that, that especially a guy like Lecrae, who's been in front of the camera openly professing to be a Christian since uh, longer than a lot of these guys, the kids have been alive. It's a good thing to think about a fellow brother or sister in Christ Think about the best, the best of them. Like, like Lecrae. Oh no, he wouldn't be trying to do that in an unfruitful way. Like, as far as your initial impulse. So I thought that was dope. That TJ was like, no, I'm, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt initially. Like, he knew he was about to get into talking about it a little bit deeper, but he wasn't concerned with just like throwing the man into question right off the bat because he had a reputation. So he was giving him the benefit of the doubt, and I think we got to do that a lot more often with our brothers and sisters. Is don't be quick to assume the worst about somebody. There's something to be learned with that. Caleb goes into uh, why he personally does Christian hip hop. And he says, first and foremost, I got into Christian hip hop to spread the kingdom message. And uh, I don't think anyone's arguing against that, you know, and I think Caleb even would recognize that, like, um, it's okay to do something other than that. But as far as when we talk about this CHH thing, we should be about spreading the kingdom, spreading the message. And then he also goes on to say, we have to explain ourselves better in our music. And the example he showed is he was like, you know, a lot of guys in the secular space, they talk about driving the whip or, you know, I'm whipping the foreign or I'm rocking the ice or I'm doing this. And there really isn't any clarification on like what that's pointing to, what the poetry actually means on a deeper level, where the music is going. Secular people oftentimes just say rap lines to say rap lines. Um, and unfortunately, I think Christians do that too. Uh, you hear a lot of Christian cats say certain lines like, oh, I'm flicking through the scripts or I got 66 books in the clip or, um, you know, just all kind of stuff that's like Christian bumper sticker phrases that we've heard before that has like a Christian theme, but it has really nothing to do with the song or it's not even really a powerful point to make. It's just filler. Um, so I don't think that him making that point in particular was like, it's like, well, we do that too. And we should kind of uh, be accountable to that. Um, but 
He also said that the content of Blessings, the song, is, is a lot monetary focused. And I had a, uh, some interesting thoughts on that as well. Basically what he's saying is, this song is talking about a whole lot of monetary value. Um, I got the car, I got the house, I got the ice, my, me and my wife are married, you know, whatever the, the things are that Lecrae had and whatever the things were that Ty had. And he felt that the kingdom of God and the spiritual stuff, as far as what a blessing is, the ultimate blessings that Christians have, it, it being, first thing being in Christ and salvation and things like that, none of the bigger things that kind of are the essence of the, the kind of the ultimate blessing, none of those things were even talked about. It was like really surface level stuff that is way down in the chain in terms of importance. And ultimately was saying like, yo, people do this type of music in the secular space and they talk about their things, their stuff. Um, so why is this a Christian hip hop song? Just because it does the same thing. Um, and so here are my thoughts kind of in summary on that particular section. It just made me think, um, why is there such a high focus on monetary value in Christian music? Meaning, I hear so often in music, even in Christian hip hop in particular, Yo, I'm whipping this, I'm reading this, I'm doing this, me and the boys are this, the girl was in me were this. You know, it's just like, I got the, the this on my feet, this on my chest, this on my hat. And, and it can even be in a Christian way, like almost like, yo, I got the, the book of James on this. You know, like, it, it's just, there's such a horizontal level of like this need that we have to say, this is what I'm wearing. This is what I'm saying. This is, uh, one of my homies said, you know, I, I, I hate when rappers talk about what they talk about, meaning, oh, I'm going to tell you that it's almost like talking about themselves in third person, so to speak. But it's just like, why do we talk about things so much? When we talk about, or when we think about spiritual value and what actually happens to a Christian being made a new creature in Christ, losing their life so that they can truly gain it, um, Jesus dying on the cross for our sins, him doing the work that we could never do, us being reunited with the Father in good standing, um, having new eyes to see, um, dying to the flesh, pursuing joy in Christ above all things so that Nothing can destroy our true joy, which is in Christ, so that if you, you could take anything from me, I don't need to have the whip. I don't need to have the marriage. I don't need to have the, you know, you just fill that spot that people brag about. I don't need to have any of that because at the end of the day, even though those things are cool and great, if I didn't have any of them, I have everything in Christ. And so, like, it made me think, like, it's not that it's a bad thing, but like, if people, when they talk about in this case, blessings, or the best parts about being a believer, why do we first want to just drench a lot of our music in the monetary side of it? Like, that's the last part of it. The first part is this, this new creation, this new heart, this new mind, this new eyes. That's the, the big thing. All this other stuff is like cool, but when we just only talk about a lot of that stuff horizontally, it makes it look like, well, I got that. I'm not even a believer and I got all that too. Like just because you have God and have all that, like what's the real difference? And I think if we stay there, there is no real difference until we actually communicate and address the, the spiritual side of what is going on, the heart change, the, the new mind, the new eyes, the new sight, the, the dead man coming to life, what Jesus has actually done, the actual good news, the bad news, things like that. So it, it made me think like, man, we were so monetary, even on the, the CHH side sometimes. Um, also, you know, the question on that monetary side is, is, is that the biggest change that you have in your life is, oh, you got the whip, you got the house. Oh, you kicked the drug habit. Oh, you restored that relationship with such and such. Is that stuff bigger than what actually happens when you have salvation, when you actually have complete joy in the Lord? Should there be an ordering of priority and a clarification of what matters most in music when we talk about a blessing? Just throwing that up in the air. 
um, you know, my question I wrote here is, can we lose sight of the bigger gain that we actually have? What's the ultimate blessing instead of just some blessings and things like that? Um, also, why do we love to say things that might have a meaning, but we only said it because it rhymed or it made us feel cool saying it? Um, a lot, of, and that kind of goes back to what I was saying before. A lot of times we just like to say stuff to say it. It might have meaning in, in and of itself, but we didn't really say it because it tied to anything. We just said it to say it. Christians do this a lot. We just say filler Christian things and hope that it somehow comes off as super meaningful when I think a lot of people can detect like, yo, this is filler. You This doesn't even tie into the song theme or the song theme doesn't even have a real theme. You're just grabbing stuff. So, um... What did I write here? Um, Christians love to say stuff that is seemingly deep or poetic and then later on give it a definition or a meaning, which is also known as reaching. <laughs> when you just threw something out there with no intent and then later try to connect the dot of what it might mean, that's a reach. That's filler. That's non-intentional. That's not creative that you know what i'm saying like you're you're almost trying to like hold yourself accountable later on by trying to act like you actually did it for a different purpose when you really were just trying to get the bar off um things like that okay moving along so next tj carroll had mentioned this comment he said he thinks lecrae's goal was to peek into the secular and pull people out um as far as the reason for doing this video um and, and so He's saying, okay, they made the song Blessings to kind of tap into the secular space and make people look at God when they think of blessings or something along that effect. And, and my thoughts to that is like, you know, I, I find myself asking, um, you know, is that, is it really, a, is that an effective pr approach to the world to say, you know, hey, look, my life is blessed too, just in a different way. I would, I would like to hear a little more elaboration there because just simply being there and saying like, oh, we have blessings too, but it comes from God. I don't think that's enough. Um, I, didn't, I don't think that's a convincing, like, I don't know, mission statement. I don't think that's a convincing, like, curb question. I think just simply saying, oh, you got, you got Nikes on, I got Nikes on too, but they come from God. Oh, you got the whip, I got the whip too, but I give God the glory for it. It starts to get ambiguous when that type of stuff isn't really clarified. And, and also like, again, going back to the question of like the monetary side of it is like, is that even the first, is that even a good leading uh, sentiment? to bring somebody into even wrapping their mind around God? And does it get confusing when you do it next to somebody that doesn't represent those values at all? You know, does it get lost? Um, so again, I think it's a valid point, but as, as far as saying like, you know, Lecrae might've had that intent, but I find myself asking like, you know, if it stays too generic or lacking clarity, like, how do we feel like we're connecting strategy and purpose together when, you know, there is a such thing as like kind of just throwing a grenade and hoping it lands with no real effective strategy or like having a bad strategy, but still trying to get good results with. So my question is, is that even a good strategy to have if we don't have a lot of clarity in what we're saying in the actual song? Um, moving along, Caleb said, Everyone be talking behind closed doors and not coming out with their stance on things. And I, I stopped and I said, wow, that is so true. He's talking about the fact that, you know, Christians will talk behind closed doors all, all day about things like, for instance, this Lecrae video on blessings. They'll barbershop talk that all day long, but you'll never hear it because they'll never go public with it. I think there is a fruit in going privately to your brother's and resolving something or even talking about something you might have seen in social media. I do think there's a, a huge benefit to privatizing that for the sake of not going on social media and saying something ridiculous. But on the other hand, if you're an influencer and your whole job is to be online sharing content, why would you not share? You know, I mean, here's a, here's a valid point. What if me and 10 people had a great discussion about something like this topic, why would we not 
after we spoke about it, share what we found or share, hey, we're in process with this and things like that. There's so much fruit to be had in that. And I think a lot of people think their best piece of content is their music or their art. When in reality, it's like the conversations actually can go a lot further because everybody can relate to that. Not everybody understands everything you're saying in the music, can break down the poetry, uh, can be impacted in the most powerful way. But when they just see you talking to somebody and having a good conversation about life and the things that are going on in the Christian life and things like that, everybody can understand that. So I think we lead, we, we, we think like, oh, if we just post a picture of a discussion or a video of a discussion or things like that, it's too dry. And I think that it's the opposite. People want to hear what their favorite Christian rap artists have to say on things or their favorite artists or creators of any kind. They want to see your perspective on things. They want to see that you're not just perfect, that you're trying to figure things out. You're trying to be more Christ-like. They want to see what your community looks like with your local church and your fellowship circles. They want to see the behind the scenes. That's a part of the journey. And a lot of times that's way more important than the, the art itself. So I thought that that was a great point that he made is that we always be behind closed doors and nobody's willing to come out and say anything. And that was the whole pre premise behind why he said what he said on Twitter. Um, Caleb also says, you know, he asked himself while listening to the song, what did this song do for me? And I think he was referring to the CHH audience as a whole, like, what does a song like this do for Christians? Uh, which I think is a valid question. Again, if this is a song that's categorized in the Christian hip hop category, that's a valid question. If it's not, then I don't think it's really a valid question. Um, and that goes to the point of like, maybe it's not for Christians. You know what I'm saying? And if it's not for Christians, then does it need to edify the church? Does it need to build you up? Does it need to even focus on you? If that, if the song's intent is to reach the lost, um, does it need to represent anything that you value as a Christian? And the answer is obviously no. But then we get into a little bit of ambiguity because it's like if you're a Christian even if you're making music that isn't necessarily for Christians, you still need to uphold your, your moral compass. So um, is that still being maintained when you go over the fence, so to speak? So, uh, and again, I'm not suggesting that Lecrae wasn't. These are just my mind, you know, ventilating out loud. Um, Caleb's girl jumped in. She said, it's important who we hear shouting about Jesus. What kind of character is that man? Are they valid to be speaking on the things that they're speaking on? She was coming from the standpoint of the importance of the quality of life of the speaker and the content of their life behind the music. It's important that if somebody's saying something, we say, okay, what is the character of the man behind who's saying it? So that we can validate that this is even worth examining, that this is something worth following, things like that. Basically, who's playing the part and who's really walking it is super important in music. Now, I will say this. I do think that's a good point, but not necessarily in context with this conversation. I don't think anybody is listening to Lecrae and saying, this is a fraud. This is a man that, you know, the quality of the character behind the mic, like Lecrae is very in, in the light. Very much you can catch him, his spiritual life behind the camera, if you watch the right interviews or you're in Atlanta or, you know, or, or there's enough people testifying to their time with Lecrae as being a solid Christian man. Um, I, don't, I don't think that's a relevant comment to make in particular to that. But the fact that she made that point is important in general because we want to hear the perspective on, in this case, blessings from somebody who's actually living the Christian life and doing it well and growing in Christ and cares about the things that uh, God wants us to care about. We don't want to hear per se, for instance, like, I don't want to say Ty Dolla Sign here, but insert your other non-Christian man there. We don't want to hear his perspective on godly things because he's not coming from that place. Like he's not the new creation. He's not he might have some like intellectual insight, but as far as like we want to fall, we want to hear people speak on godly things that are godly men. Point blank period. 
Um, and I think that was at the heart of what she might have been trying to get at. Um, so my thoughts again to that is, are we, are we even holding people accountable in the music to the smoke that they be blowing in their music about the spiritual things? You know, when people talk about Christian things in Christian music, we should be asking ourselves, who are these people behind the music? Um, as far as if we want to follow the things that they're talking about and consider the things that they want to talk about. Character is huge. That's extremely biblical. Um, and there's biblical warnings against this. Like the Bible says we'll all be held accountable to the things that we say and do. So um, I think that's valid on her part to have mentioned that. Um, now, TJ Carroll said that he's noticed in his short walk that there's such a spectrum of Christian thought on what's acceptable in this space. Um, he said, you got to just go with the Holy Spirit as far as he's speaking to Lecrae making the decision to collaborate with Ty Dolla Sign and make that record. He's saying, you know, a lot of times people disagree on what the motive should be in Christian hip hop and how we should do it effectively. So at the end of the day, you just got to go by the Holy Spirit. I think there's some validity there, but I don't think it's a complete response. Um, so the comment I had here was, well, yeah, you better go even more with the word of God just as much as you're going with the spirit so that you can discern what is being spirit led from what is being self led. A lot of times we'll be sitting there and we'll be like, yo, I'm just going with the spirit when really you're just confused and you're just going to go your own way. You're not really interested in what God wants for you. You're kind of just writing off your, you being autonomous by saying, oh, I'm just going to go walk with the spirit. Really, you're just walking with yourself. So we don't want to do that either. So we need to know the word of God to actually discern what might be spiritual and what might be flesh. Um, this can get dangerous. Um, I'm just going to read the write-up because it provides some more insight. I also think this can get dangerous because we can call things the spirit a lot when really we're just in a place of confusion and we don't want to accept guidance and perspective. So we go off into a la-la land of disobedience or self-searching, which is not biblical at all. So make sure in those moments people can really see and access the quality of that belief or conviction that you're walking in so that you're truly in a Holy Spirit guide me circumstance. And uh, amen to that. Um, next, TJ Carroll says, you know, I'm making music for the one, not the 99. That's who Jesus went for. I'm not interested in tickling a Christian's ear. And I have something to say about that because I can amen the sentiment of it, which is like some people make music for the block they come from, the family they come from the different groups they come from. And they're not, I can sit with that sentiment. Like you do not make your music for Christians. Okay. But I have to question if that's cap or not, because, and not to TJ in particular, just, it makes me think in general, a lot of people say they don't make music for Christians. They make music for the lost, but their music is all a big flex. Meaning, it's like Christian themed, it's, it's all about the flex, it, there's no real missional vibe to it, it's just kind of theme music for Christians. A lot of these guys that say this stuff, it's, it's just completely cat because um, they, they do love the, com the, com the camaraderie of making music for Christians. It might not be like the primary goal, but they certainly make a lot of music talking about the camaraderie of the fellowship of, hey, we're Christians and we're out here trying to save souls and we ain't in it. That's a song for a Christian's ear. It's not for a non-believer. A non-believer is going to listen to that and be like, that ain't me. Um, so um, we, we need to be a little more realistic with that perspective because if you really do make music for the lost, it should all sound a certain way with a certain level of intent. And if if you're also putting out a high volume of kind of like God flex and stuff um, or like camaraderie flexing in the brotherhood and things like that, is that really in alignment with that statement? So I, I just wrote here, um, uh, 
you know, I hear a lot of Christians mostly flexing more than I hear them trying to reach the one as opposed to the 99. Um, and I put here, oh, this is an additional point. So what I was looking over here is a lot of people in this conversation in general about Lecrae, a lot of people step in to these kind of conversations and they'll be like, yo, that's so tired. That's so old. Like, give it up. Like, we shouldn't be talking about it. I completely disagree with that sentiment. Like, don't ever let up on discussing Christian things. Um, people really want to prioritize their comfort over your discomfort. Some people are okay in the discomfort of like seeking what is a good Christian life. How should we think through Christian art making? What brings God the maximum glory? Um, oh, I heard this Christian say this, so I want to call it into question and have an actual debate about it so that we can both see this thing better. And a lot of Christians do that, and because they didn't have the best experience conversing with somebody, they want to try to convince you that it's a lost cause figuring out these conversations. When the reality is, you can have an argument with somebody lovingly, respectfully, with self-control, with concern and care, with the patience, with the fruits of the spirit, you know what I'm saying? Like, we should be doing this stuff, and we just need better examples of it being done well, so there's not this such a negative stigma towards Christians that are arguing about certain subjects. So I, I really want to step in and be like, yo, if anyone's ever telling you not to seek out how to make much of the glory of God in all things, and in this case, Christian art making, like that, that couldn't be anything far from the truth. Um, now on the flip side, I will say that we do need to make light of the fact that a lot of people aren't having these conversations lovingly and with respect and with patience and things like that. And they're putting a bad rap on Christians because people are like, yo, this is how Christians communicate. They never agree. They always got the boxing gloves on. That aspect of it is bad, and we should denounce that. Like, we should say, no, this is really how you conduct yourself. But with that being assumed, if that's the case, it is a good thing to, to be discussing these things. It's just not being done correctly. So we need to amen the things that are done correctly and disapprove of the things that aren't being done correctly. And I think that this conversation that TJ had on his live was definitely the example of it being done the right way. Also, a lot of season, uh, basically to sum that up, a lot of seasoned influencers in the CHH space grow tired of the fighting uh, on certain subjects. And rather than passing the baton to you to continue the conversation, they want to downplay it and try to convince you that it's a waste of time. I completely disagree um, that, that it's a waste of time. A lot of times when we see these collabs, by the way, they are completely unnecessary to the missional perspective. In fact, we should tread lightly over this kind of territory because of the implications of these type of art collaborations a lot of times do more hurt than upliftment, especially if you don't take the next step of documenting or sharing your experience with that secular person. So it leaves Christians confused. Basically what I'm saying there is when you go to do these collaborations where you know other Christians would look at you and be like, yo, that's questionable. Why are you doing that? You, as an adult, you should already understand that and be ready to give an account for that action step that you did. You don't go, have to go out and kind of make a case to everybody in the world, but it would be smart and fruitful for you to sit down and say, okay, people are probably going to see this a certain way and be willing to come out and say, okay, recently, guys, I work with Ty Dolla Sign and this is the relationship that we've had in the background. This is why we did the song. This was my intent. Be willing to go under that microscope if you represent this genre. Always be willing to seek the counsel of many. Always be willing to give a witness and share a testimony of, of what God's doing in your life and what your goals are. Um, a lot of people just go and do drastic things that they know will cause controversy, and they just don't want to give account to any of it. That That's clown stuff right there. Also, um, just reading here. Also, I want to say this. This is why we need a Christian art definition. And if you don't want to swim in this Christian hip-hop water, you need to get your butt out. Because Christians care about how God is represented. And that's why Caleb even came out in the first place with that tweet. He was like, yo, I care about how God is represented. This ain't that. Anyway, um, now, if that's too deep for you, then I think you need to get out of the genre. Which is okay. Um, you can absolutely be a Christian and not do Christian hip-hop and still be holy, but be in a different genre. 
but not be explicitly uh, Christian motivated in the theme of the music, obviously. People want, here's the, the problem with that though, people want the benefits of the CHH space with no accountability. And there can't be accountability to something that hasn't been defined. So because we haven't defined what the genre should represent, we can't hold somebody to that standard or call somebody into question who's not doing the things that we believe in in it until there's some kind of collective unity on, on what it should stand for. And Caleb spoke to the importance of that. We're not saying Lecrae didn't do that. I, I'm, I'm going to assume that Lecrae was asked a ton of questions since 2017 about that move, and he's probably come out and said very openly, this is what happened in working with Ty. This is why we made the song. This was what the intent was. Um, but again, with a lot of the newer kids, they're hearing that song for the first time. They've never really even heard Lecrae's stance on it. So it's not like it's invalid. Um, but this is why if you're an influencer and you do something controversial, you should not only be willing to give an account, but like you should run to that, to, to share on your YouTube channel or... Even if it's like an amen worthy moment or even if it's a moment where you did something you wish you didn't do and you learned from it, be willing to share that experience so that people don't call you into question. And it looks crazy when somebody calls you into question and you just ignore it and act like it's not important to give an account as a Christian. That that doesn't make sense to do either. Um, I think we got to stop saying that just because a Christian is doing life and speaking on it, um, that it's gospel just because they did the collaboration. They happen to be a Christian working with a non-Christian. Oh, the gospel is just going to happen. It may be part of it, but it, it's not just, you don't get to play that card. You can't just be like, oh, well, my music talks about my life and that's just the gospel. Um, maybe, but maybe not. There's people that talk about their life and you won't hear the gospel in it at all. And there's also people that might sprinkle a little bit about the gospel, but mostly just talk about their life outside of it and they want to still play the card that it's still gospel and it's really not. What is the gospel? And if your answer to that is, oh, it's my life. You know, I don't even know what to say to you because... Last time I checked, the gospel is the good news. The, the state of what the world was in, what Jesus had done explicitly. Th that thing might have implications on your life, which it absolutely does. It affects your, the entirety of your life. But you don't then just get to go talk about the things that happened in your life and call it gospel. That's not, you know what I mean? Like, I wish I, wish I would have actually thought about a great example, because I'm sure I could just bring up a ridiculous example um, of how people can take one moment and make it blanket over everything that they do. But it's just, it's, it's such a reach to approach art making that way or to try to, or even in evangelism to try to say, because I'm a Christian, every room I step in is going to be evangelism. No, it's not. <laughs> so um, we got to stop doing that. Um, let's see what else here. Um, one of the most difficult things to process is that when we look at the scriptures, we don't have a lot of examples of people who did art or vocations work uh, with Christian themes or intent. When we hear about the gospel being presented, it is very specific and it is very blunt. This is the gospel. Um, there were certain things that it was and there were definitely things that it was not. Not everything that is done is beneficial. Some things should be put into question as to its benefits. Guys, not everything that we do is going to be for the sake of the gospel, meaning you might think sometimes something has gospel intentions and realize, oh, it really doesn't. I just had different goals in mind and they were revealed to me. Or, oh, this was really about this and wasn't about it. Or, oh, this might have been about the gospel seemingly, but it wasn't really effective and it's not really helpful. So we need to put it off and pick something else up. It's not always um, a all in one deal. It's not just always cut dry. Like there are mistakes and there are victories and we need to certainly reject certain things about what people call ministry and what people call the gospel and how we choose to interact with the world. There are strategies that suck. They're not good. They're not helpful. Um, and we got to be willing to admit that.
Okay, so Ruslan jumps into the conversation at this point, and he made uh, one excellent point that I want to bring up. He said, you could fall into two extremes, over dogmaing Christian liberties versus using liberties unfruitfully. And what he means here is, we can say things like, oh, just because Lecrae was seen with Ty Dolla Sign, he's either not a Christian or he's in sin. Even though we clearly don't see sin, we, we look at certain practices that people do and automatically write it off as sinful, even though it may or actually may not be the case. Um, and so we don't want to over dogma like, well, if you do this, you're in sin when we haven't actually broken that down and, and looked at it. But also the other thing to that, to call into question is when you're taking a Christian liberty that... Um, it is not necessarily sinful, but it's not fruitful either. Meaning like it winds up actually being to your detriment to do it that way, even though it's not explicitly like sinful, it might be leading you down a path of a wrong thinking or something that leads to sin or something like that, or just is not even effective. It might not be sinful, but just not even fruitful as far as its effectiveness. Um, and so we can fall into two categories, just kind of like, going unchecked and under the radar and using Christian liberties unfruitfully, but we can also be dogmatic and say, oh, you should never work with, a, uh, uh, you should never collaborate with a non-Christian. It is always sinful. That is not the case. That is dogmatizing things, um, or sorry, that's being dogmatic. I don't even know if that's a word, but um, you guys get the point there. Um, he made a point that Christians seem to be the only one, this is, this is separate now. This is where he pivots. He made a point that Christians seem to be the only ones arguing about some of these things. And, and my response is that that's completely false. And here's why. This was the one thing I disagreed with Ruslan about. You know, if we look around, people who choose to live, and I have to read this because otherwise I'll tangent in a way that's not helpful. People, choose, people who choose to live with intent, purpose, and wisdom are always put in the background of society and, le and are less seen because by default, most people want very comfortable, non-confrontational lives that lack any tension. This is not just a Christian on Christian thing. This happens in the world all the time. Now, add that to the fact that we are an extremely small community as Christians. The reason why Ruslan may only be seeing that Christians are the ones arguing about these things is because, quite literally, that's all he might choose to see. Um, it's possible, and I talk with people about this all the time. And, and again, I'm not claiming this about Ruslan. I'm just putting it into question more generically. Like, I think there's a such thing as kind of creating a world in which you're always going to see narrowly, meaning you might be surrounded by a certain set of communities or a certain group of things. And so that's just what you're always going to see. So in those communities, all you might see is the arguing or all you might see is the negativity. But I think the in general, to Ruslan's point, like to say only Christians are only Christians seem to be the ones that are arguing about what is Christian hip hop and what's not like in general, if we peel back, we're having a conversation about how should we do Christian art making better and what practices are bad practices, what are good, what are healthy, what are ambiguous. Those are very important questions that I think we need to dive into. And I think people take those topics and they go other places with them that aren't helpful, which again, as I was saying earlier, is the stuff that we shouldn't do. But when it's being done healthy, it's, it's, it's essential. It's like lifeblood. It's like, it's so encouraging and helpful to be able to navigate through these things. And if we don't talk about these things, then we can't navigate through them. Um, and we need better navigational tools as believers on how we can do this stuff effectively, especially if we're going to go out in the world, we need to hear the testimonies and the accountability of those going out in the world and, and doing these things, uh, for God's glory to see what are the victories and what are the shortcomings of those experiences and how can I put myself in that same situation and do it better. Um, and so the world does this too. I don't care if we're talking about, 
uh, working out, uh, being intelligent, critical thinking, uh, fashion or whatever, there's always a group of intellectuals sitting in the background asking deeper things of intent and purpose and the totality of things and they don't get the spotlight. You don't see these people being mentioned on major blogs and major places until they get their audiences up. There's always a group of people that want to go deeper that are trying to figure out things in the background and sometimes it takes a lot more time to kind of cultivate kind of the the benefits and the and, and the audience and all the different components that would make those values get pushed to the forefront but the world is doing that just as much as Christians are and maybe he had a different point to that but I just wanted to make that point that like there's nothing wrong in my opinion with Christians who are arguing about these these things um, it may seem dumb but if what we're trying to get at is the heart of like how we can go out and do life better and make better decisions, it's always fruitful. The real question is, how do we have those conversations lovingly with the fruits of the Spirit in a way that can not only be encouraging to us, but encouraging to the people who see us having these discussions? Some parts of it I agree, some parts I disagree. It's like, it's like how about instead of fighting, there's some things that are going to be said that are just naturally discouraging, seemingly, until you actually break them down and find out that they're actually loving. Or there, there should be the ability to be able to learn and grow and evolve the conversation to get a little more loving. Um, but I, I think instead of saying, like, kind of keep your comments to yourself about these things unless they're positive, it's more like, how about we just, instead of fighting, we just talk? Let's, like... Let's not just completely leave out of the room and just keep it positive or something like that. Like, no, let's keep it critical, but let's just talk rather than fight. Let's take the boxing gloves off and have hugs come with our deep criti criticisms of these things. Um, let's learn to leave it at that and let's take off the boxing gloves. Maybe this is, this is exactly what we need to be doing, which is keeping a watch out for one another. Um, and, and you can find this in Hebrews 10.24, which says, Spur one another towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as, the day, uh, as you see the day approaching. Um, now, I do love the point that Ruslan made about the Christian arts, um, where he said it should just be a supplement, not the main course of your spiritual walk, your maturity, etc., it is not the end-all be-all for your spiritual journey. And for a lot of you guys, Christian hip-hop and the community at hand is all that you consume. You're not in the local church. You're not in fellowship. You're not in all of the things God has called us to. You are simply just digesting every bit of spiritual learning and relation with the CHH community. And, and it should really be a supplement. It's not like it should not be treated as the main course. Um, there are millions of Christians moving in the purposes of God that have nothing to do with this community. So that should speak to what's really going on on a macro level. God is not only way bigger than this, but he is also using this, which is CHH and a bunch of other things in the world to draw people to himself, namely the gospel, which provided by the, which is provided by the word of God and his Holy Spirit and the work of Christ transforming individuals that will become new creations and spread that message to the ends of the earth in any way that they can. Basically what I'm saying there is like CHH is not the end all be all. God is still accomplishing his purpose of spreading the gospel and everything in many areas of the world and in many cultures completely outside of CHH. C CHH is just this small little thing that God is doing amazing things with, but it's not the end all be all. And it's basically like this, this CHH bubble is, is like surrounds some people where it's like all they have spiritually. And, um, and, and Ruslan is basically saying like, no, you need the local church. You need to have accountability in your you need to have tangible people you can touch and see and love on. You need to be in the community of God and the family of God. You need to be um, in fellowship. You need to be in your study groups and things like that. Because if you were deeply involved in those things, you wouldn't be getting so stressed out about this thing that we call CHH and all this stuff going on and, and getting overly passionate about it. Um, so I, I do think that was a good point. Okay, let's start from here. 
So Kieran enters the conversation um, at this point, and I'm not going to break down everything that he said, but I just wanted to make a couple of mentions. He had said that he is basically talking about his own music, and he he said that he tries to insert Jesus into every song because um, that's what's on his heart to do. But he understands that there are different parts of the body. There's people who might have different intents in their Christian music making, and so my thoughts to that is I would I would just simply caveat that by saying. No matter what part of the body is functioning, we should absolutely smell the aroma of Christ on whatever we're doing. Um, the love of God, the purpose of God, the intent of God's people, the lifestyle of God's people, etc. No matter if you're functioning as the arm, the leg, or whatever, it should still look like the body that it belongs to. That's kind of just an additional point on top of what Kieran said because I don't think that that negates what he had mentioned here. There are different parts of the body and the music is going to sound different, but let's just not forget that it should still look like the body it's attached to. This is what we don't want to include in our music as believers. And again, this might just be my opinion, but I feel like this is just assumed, but this should be assumed. Um, we don't want to hear self-pride in something other than Christ and the gospel. We want to boast in Christ. Uh, I think there might be a little bit of room there to boast in your brother uh, or sister in Christ on something that they might be doing. Uh, I think the, the scriptures are clear, you know, let somebody else boast of you um, if, if that's where it goes. Um, but we don't want to see self-pride. Uh, this is a value that we should uphold. We don't want to say anything controversial with scripture as far as something that's not in scripture or something that negates something that the scripture declares to be a good thing or something like that. I don't think we want to use harsh language. Now, that's the tough one. Because what is harsh language? And I think that we could make some cases for some things and whatnot. But generally speaking, if you come out the gate saying you make Christian hip hop and you have swearing in your music or you're dropping the N-bomb and things like that, that's not going to fly. That seems to be the one thing in CHH that 99% of most believers would agree. No, that we're not with that. Um, or even just harsh language in general where you're just like super combative of things and, and expressing hate. Um, and again, I know that those two are not the same thing, but they can be. Um, here's another one that we don't want to see in your music. Oh, look at me. I'm great at what I do. Look at my lyrics. Look at my melody. Look at my swag. Basically bragging. We don't want to see that um, in, in your collaborations with other artists. And we don't want to see you do it as an artist as well. Um, we don't want to see you beefing with the church or church ideas. Um, and by beefing, I mean that harshness, that aggressiveness, that kind of trying to tear somebody down unlovingly. Um, talking about certain Christian liberties that look similar to the world in sin, but you're not explaining or giving clarity to certain words, phrases, and visuals. We don't want to see you looking like the world in your music and not providing clarity that it's not actually the same thing. Uh, which a lot of Christians do. Yo, look at me, I'm in the whip, I'm doing this, I'm sipping that, I'm drinking, whatever it is. Culturally, you're sounding like that, but you're not really giving any caveats. You're not being clear. You're sounding just like the world, and people are going to say, well, well, why is this a Christian song? Um, we don't want to see that either in the music. If, if you want to do that, go do that elsewhere uh, if, it's, if, it's, if you have a healthy, if, a healthy way of doing that, if that even makes sense. Um, we don't want to hear somebody with the desire to not have any content around the purpose of life, the state of the world, God's purposes, the body of Christ, biblical truth, etc. So what happens is you have a set of values, a set of assumed values as a believer. And if you come into contact with another person that is a Christian, you kind of assume that you guys share those values. And sometimes you can find that you don't. And so that needs to be addressed. But this situation with Lecrae is, um, with Ty Dolla Sign, if you come into contact with somebody who's in the secular space and you know that they don't value what you value, how do you make that work? How do you get the things that need to be communicated to come across in the music without being questioned to the, the different stuff? Basically, at best, you can get a Ty Dolla Sign that just kind of plays the part or cleans himself up for what Lecrae's going to do on the record. But just the imagery, it, but you're only one song away from calling all that into question when people actually click Ty Dolla Sign and play his music, and then they go, wait a second, what? he's not 
coming from the same standpoint as Lecrae at all. And again, if Lecrae's intent was for people on Ty's side who would then say, who is Lecrae, and then would hear Lecrae's body of work, that would make sense. From the Christian perspective, people that would be clicking, you can't, you have to acknowledge that both of these things happen when you do this collaboration. Ty's audience is going to see Lecrae and go, who's Lecrae, and click Lecrae and see the gospel and everything that he's about. They're also going to be um, Lecrae's fans that see Ty Dolla Sign and click Ty Dolla Sign, not knowing who he is, and then hear all of what comes with that. You have to acknowledge that those two things happen, and you have to be ready to kind of give an account for... You can't just say, I don't think it's wise to just be like, well, whatever happens, happens. I'm making it for the people who are in Ty's audience who are going to click my name. But I'm not going to protect my fans and let them know, hey, this is why I did this. This is my intent. Oh, by the way, if you click this guy, you might find this. I think that that's just like... Um, it's like a double-edged sword where it's like, okay, on one hand, you did something good, which has reached the lost, but at the expense of not clarifying something over here. So we don't want to do, we, we got to break all that down and like try to find ways to clarify the actions. Um, but again, I wanted to also break down the values as far as Christian on Christian, because that can even happen in our own inner circle where you collab with a Christian that kind of does stand for one of these things, you know, bragging or harsh language or something. And then there can be some conflict as well when you hear two seemingly Christian people with with two different values clearly being expressed on a track. This is why clarity is like super important. I'm going to just read a couple of points here. Um, a lot of artists will sell you their life testimony because they can blend into a worldly aesthetic and just leave the car there or park in that theme a lot more often than pointing to anything else. Again, this might not be a sin, but it might not be where you want to hang your hat all day either in the testimonial stuff where it goes from being like a testimony of this is how I got saved and this is what God's doing in my life to like now you're not even mentioning God at all and now you're just like yo I'm in the whip I pulled up to the park I ate the sandwich I did this uh, and you're just out here like kind of broadcasting the the regular practical parts of your living but now you don't even hear where the spiritual aroma is being gusted into that and now you're like well is this even what it used to be type of thing some people live in that arena so long that eventually the aroma of Christ just leaves the whole essence of it and you don't even really get any spiritual con uh, content. Uh, uh, it, they like assume that it's still there just because they're Christians and it, and it might not be. Um, you got to keep inventory of how your time is allocated um, and we should be seeking to glorify God in all that we do. It shouldn't be corny for a Christian to want to go to extremes to make God known and glorified in everything in their life. That is not corny. Yes, it can be ritualized into things that are spiritually empty and become lip service, but it can also absolutely be done appropriately, and those people should be uplifted as the models for how we should want to live in that same way, doing all things to the glory of God in a healthy, undogmatic way where it's natural, it's something you want to do, and it's for the purposes of God alone and not for your own type of weird thing. Uh, we can find a healthy way to do this, and we should aspire to do all things to the glory of God. Um, the life and life abundant is a complete is a pursuit of a complete contentment in Christ. That is the end. We want to ride that wave toward that objective. Sure, life can be abundant, but it can also be empty. And every time we have either emptiness or fullness, we are challenged to find love, peace, and joy in God alone so that our hope cannot be taken from us when we have nothing or when we have a lot. 
What I love more than any of this is that I believe with all my heart that God is going to do what he does regardless, and it's going to be timely, and it's going to be amazing. Before I wrap up here, just want to say a quick prayer. Lord, I thank you that this conversation was had. I pray that people wouldn't skip over from it, but people would take little bite-sized chunks from it, really study it and apply it on their hearts so that they can do all things to your glory. They can be effective communicators. They can go out in the world and do amazing things for your glory. They can experience a, a contentment in you that is bigger than anything they might have or any kind of accomplishment they might have. If it all went away today and we, ha we had seemingly nothing, let us uh, go in the reality that we have everything in you and we can even be content with that reality so that whether we have much or we have little, our lives still look radiant with your love and your purpose for our lives and our contentment in you. I thank you that this conversation would, was had and I pray that more people have this conversation and learn how to communicate effectively in the body so that we can broadcast to the world um, this group of people that you've called to yourself that will bring the gospel to the ends of the world and people can see the love of God, which should be above everything and should be a new way that people can look at and be like, yo, what are these Christians talking about? And who is this God that they love so much? But also look at the love they have for one another and look how they treat each other and how they deal with conflict. I pray, I pray that all of that would bring maximum glory to you and that we could learn how to do that effectively. And I pray Thanks that all of these individuals got together to discuss your glory and they did it lovingly and respectfully. And I pray that more people could learn to do that from this example. Um, in Jesus name we pray. Amen. I wanted to provide some additional insight because the conversation was so striking and so dope. I wanted to just add to it for the people that follow my content. And so... Um, sound off in the comments. Let me know what you thought. If you thought this video was encouraging, share this with uh, your brothers and sisters so that they can pick up on it. You know, watch a little bit today, watch a little bit next week, chew on this information over a long period of time, do it in community. Um, and yeah, um, I hope more conversations like this come about to close the year off and going into 2023. I think if anything, if we learn how to love each other better in conversation, learn how to communicate stronger, more effectively, clearer, learn how to wrestle with people that disagree with us, um, if we get more insight on how to do life better, um, there, all these conversations are worth being had. So uh, again, I hope it blesses you guys and we are out. Peace. It's not just a beat